So this video is how to complete the tectonic plate supplemental aid. I'm going to be going over the supplemental aid for tectonic plates to help you know what to fill out and what each one of these little images means. Um, I will also be going over the two different types of plates and all the crustal features that form. So let's go ahead and get started. You're going to need something to write with so you can follow along with me. Okay, so here we have our supplemental aid paper. Um, these three images are our con different convergent boundaries. These two are our two divergent boundaries. And then this is our transform. These are the different ones that we'll be going over today. So the first thing we're going to start with is the convergent boundaries here on the left side. So here at the top, we're going to write convergent. And this is going to apply to all three of these. Okay, so here we have our convergent boundaries. Now when we think of convergent, I want you to think of that C and we're going to think of come together. So here in parentheses, I want you to write come together. Okay, so our first one, we're dealing with two continental plates, meaning two plates that are land. So right here, we're going to write continental and continental. Okay, and we're going to draw those arrows coming together. So I'm going to draw these two arrows pushing inward. Now, because these are two continental plates, neither of them is more dense than the other, so they don't really dive down underneath each other. Instead, they push each other up. So what we get on land is mountains forming. And we'll also get earthquakes that form as well in these places. So continental, continental, push together, mountains form. So here we have an animation of this exact thing happening that I talked about. We have the two plates, continents pushing together. We then have those mountain ranges forming as they push each other up. Okay, earthquakes also occur as they collide. Uh, a common place where this happens or a popular example of this is the Himalayan mountains. Uh, this is in Asia. We have two plates that are coming together and are pushing each other up to be, form really tall mountains known as the Himalayan mountains. So let's move on to the next one. This one we're going to have oceanic and continental crust. So here we're going to write oceanic and continental. Now on this particular supplemental aid we can tell that it's an oceanic plate because it has those little waves there to represent the water as in, this is the crust that's under the ocean. So these two plates are going to come together because it is a convergent boundary. But because the oceanic plate is more dense, it's going to subduct or dive down underneath the continental plate. So we're going to draw a little arrow going downward because that oceanic plate is going to go underneath. Whenever this happens, the oceanic crust melts and then that magma then rises to form volcanoes. Okay. Um, also, when this happens, because of the subduction zone where we have one plate going underneath another, at this point right here, we get deep ocean trenches that form. And these are just deep ocean areas um, in the ocean where these two plates come together that are really, really deep. And they're the deepest places on Earth. So let's look at this a little bit cl more closely. Okay, so here we have an animation of these two plates coming together. We have the oceanic diving down underneath the continental. It melts. Then with that, it then rises up to the surface and it forms volcanoes. We also have a trench form, trench form, and we also have volcanoes that occur in this area. So a common example is the Andes Mountains in South America. It forms all along the South American plate um, there, and you can see them right here. And this area has a lot of tall mountains. It also has a lot of earthquakes. So our last convergent boundary example here is going to be oceanic, oceanic. So I'm going to write oceanic here and oceanic here. Okay. Now we do also have subduction when it's an oceanic to oceanic crust. So the older, denser crust will dive down underneath the younger oceanic crust. So it's very similar to what happens here. We have... Again, oceanic, dives down underneath, comes down into the earth, melts, that magma then rises, and what we get is, again, a volcano forming. 
But because this is in the ocean, we have island arcs. Um, so we also have subduction that happens in the ocean. So here, again, we're going to have another trench. These trenches are even deeper um, because it's two oceanic crusts. So let's go ahead and look at this a little bit closer and see this come together and move and also look at an example. So again, we have one crust diving down underneath the other. That melting happens because of convection. The hot magma then rises to have those volcanoes form. And then we also have an ocean trench and earthquakes occur at that area. So we can kind of see how these two plates come together and what happens as at this boundary. A common example of this is the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. Here we can see the two oceanic crusts. Um, we have one crust going underneath each other, the other, and then we also have this island arc forming. We can also see there's the Aleutian Trench there, and they form these volcanic islands. So the next boundaries we have are the divergent boundaries. So all here on the right side, we're going to write divergent. Okay, and whenever we think divergent, we need to think that it's dividing. So here in parentheses, we're going to write divide. So here we have two oceanic crusts. Again, I can tell because of the waves that are on top. And I'm going to write oceanic and oceanic here. So these two crusts are dividing. So I'm going to draw an arrow here and an arrow here. So um, whenever this happens and these two crusts divide, what that allows to happen is for magma to rise. And we'll have, what this is causes is that magma rises, it pushes the crust out. And this is actually called seafloor spreading. And whenever we have seafloor spreading, what we get here in the ocean as that's happening and as the crust is pushing out is we get new crust that happens. So this is whenever we get our mid-ocean ridges. These are underwater mountain ranges that exist um, in the center of the Atlantic. That's our major one. So we're going to write here, we get ridges, mid-ocean ridges. Okay, so let's look at that a little bit closer. So here we have the animation, that magma comes up, it forces that crust outward, and then we have underwater mountains and underwater volcanoes form. It creates new crusts, and it's pushing those uh, plates outward. Um, a very common example of this is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that's in the center of the Atlantic Ocean. Here we can see that those underwater mountain range that exists in the center. Um, there are also a few places on Earth that you can go to to see what is happening under the water and that those plates are pushing apart. So our next divergent boundary is continental-continental. Again, these plates are dividing or moving apart. Okay, and so whenever this happens, we're pushing land apart. So this is where we get valleys or we also we get what's called rift valleys. Where the land is pushing apart, we also sometimes have some volcanic activity in here and we definitely have some earthquakes. So let's look at that a little bit closer. So here we have a divergent boundary, two continental crusts are moving apart. We have a rift valley that forms, and again, I said there's also a little bit of volcanic activity that happens there. Um, the most common example of this is the East African Rift Valley. Um, it runs across the entire eastern side of the continent of Africa. You can see that here, and what it does is it creates these big valleys, areas that exist there. And that brings us to our last boundary, which is a transform boundary. So that's this one down here. So we're going to write transform. And in parentheses, we're going to write, write that it's a slide. 
So these two plates are going to be sliding past each other. So we're going to draw two parallel arrows that are going past each other. Now the big thing that forms here is earthquakes. In fact, transform boundaries are known for major earthquakes. So what we're going to draw here is a little circle and we're going to draw a little epicenter and that's going to represent our earthquakes. Okay, um, what we also get as well along this is we get some cracks along the way. So it doesn't exactly uh, slide past each other in a perfect line. A lot of times we'll have other lines that come out and these are called fault lines. So we have those as well. So let's look at that a little bit closer. So here we have our transform boundary where these two plates are sliding past each other. We have fault lines that will form along it. And then we have major earthquakes that exist. And a lot of you know this very common example that exists in our country, um, as in California, is the San Andreas Fault. So the San Andreas Fault runs along the western side of California. It runs down most of the state. We can see that fault line here. And what it does create is these big cracks in the ground and it causes a lot of earthquakes. Southern California has a lot of earthquakes. So I hope you were able to get all the information, write everything down. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to that, our lovely supplemental aid. If you missed anything, you can go ahead and pause it right here so you can get any information that you missed. And I hope you understand all the crystal features that you need to remember with the supplemental aid.